Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to our lectures. Today we will be uh, talking about proteins and polypeptides. So our lecture today is, is titled Introduction to Proteins and Polypeptides. And as you can see, I have an example of a protein here. This protein is actually insulin. Insulin is made up of two chains, the A chain and the B chain, or you say the alpha chain. The alpha chain and the beta chain. And both of them constitute a functional protein, insulin. What is the function of insulin in the body? Insulin plays an important role in the regulation of excess blood glucose, whereby it converts glucose to glycogen. So it's an example of a protein, or you can say a polypeptide, actually. So uh, it is good we stand. And if you look at it here, it has two chains that actually folds on each other. It folds back on each other to form the functional protein that work together to bring about the regulation of excess blood glucose in blood. All right, let us immediately take it off from there. As usual, I have a beautiful quote from a titan in the space world, a physician as well, um, my Jemison. My Jemison, my Jemison um, is an American engineer, a physician. She was also a trained medical doctor and a NASA astronaut. She was very popular for becoming the first African-American woman to travel into space when she went into the orbit aboard the space shuttle Endeavour on September, September 12, 1992. She's, she's then retired and doing a lot in the community. She is a wonderful person. Now let's hear what she has to say. She says, don't let anyone rob you of your imagination your creativity or your curiosity it is your place in the world it is your life go on and do all you can with it and make it the life you want to live this is a powerful quote from Maya Jemison. all right let's immediately start up our lecture as usual we're going to be looking into the objectives we have just a brief uh, things to look at this lecture three, the three objectives are number one we'll describe the characteristics of protein we we'll then describe the functions of protein with specific examples as it relates to the body. And then finally, we're going to classify proteins in terms of solubility and also in terms of composition. So these are the three learning objectives that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about in this class. Let's immediately take it off. Proteins. What are the pro characteristics of proteins? Of course, proteins are defined as large natural polymers of amino acid, as we talked about earlier. They are polymers of amino acid, just like the peptide. So, of course, there are polypeptides that have more than 50. Polypeptides with more than 50 amino acids that are usually classified as proteins. They have more than 50 amino acid residue. Proteins are diverse in nature. What that simply means is that they have different shapes, different sizes, and different functions. There are so many of them. They are so diverse in nature, both in their shape, both in their size, and in their function. Now, proteins are assembled or constructed from the 20 naturally occurring amino acids which are the 19L amino acid and glycine. Remember, glycine is the only protein that, is, that does not undergo stereoisomerism because the, the carbon there is not a carbon carbon. Some proteins also constitute more than one polypeptide chain or unit. Some proteins are built from more than one polypeptide chain. Like we saw in what I showed you, the insulin. Insulin has two chains, the alpha chain and the beta chain. And just because the function... They have two different chains, doesn't mean they are different. Those, those two chains or those multiple chains are, are united together in a common function and a native structure of protein. So they function together as an active protein. So if you break them apart, you destroy the protein. So proteins fold in unique three-dimensional shape. That unique three-dimensional shape that maintains both their function and structure is what we call the native conformation which is the active form that performs do the biological function for which proteins are known. Now, let's talk about their functions immediately. What are the functions? Proteins have a lot of functions, depending on which way you want to look at these functions. But I have a few of them we're going to talk about. The first thing here is in structure. Now, proteins perform a lot of structural functions, and there are a lot of structural proteins, rather. So, like the keratin is a structural protein. We find it in the hair. We find it in the nails, we find it in the skin, and we find it in feathers. 
collagen as well. Collagen is also found in collective tissues where they, where they also perform connection role and structural roles as well. So proteins perform structural role. Number two, they function as catalysts or you say enzymes. Remember, enzymes are biological catalysts. There are so many examples. Enzymes are so diverse as well themselves. So two examples I had here is hexokinase. Hexokinase is the first enzyme in glycolysis, whereby glucose is phosphorylated to glucose C phosphate. The enzyme that does that is hexokinase, and its function is the phosphorylation of glucose. There is also the lactate dehydrogenase that function in the oxidation of lactate as well. Now, storage. Now, proteins perform important functions as storage. Good examples include the ferritin. Ferritin stores ion. Excess ion is actually stored as ferritin. Overalbumin is the egg white, which stores albumin. Casein in milk stores the casein protein. All these guys are all storage functions of proteins. Then what about the defense? Proteins perform, perform important role in defense or protection. Good examples are the antibodies. Most antibodies are proteins. And what do they do? The antibodies kill antigens and make sure that they don't, they don't harm the body. The fibrinogen and thro thrombin perform an important role in blood clotting. So what they simply do is that they play an important role in what? In hemostasis and make sure that someone, when you get injured, you don't bleed out because of this, both of these proteins, the fibrinogen and the thrombin. Or you can say the fibrin and the thrombin, rather. All right. Other functions also include regulation and signaling. In this case, when we talk about regulation and signaling, the insulin come, sorry, uh, the hormones come into play. Some some hormones are proteins. So good examples are the insulin and glucagon. Both insulin and glucagon are hormones. And what these hormones do is that they regulate carbohydrate metabolism in the body. Now, what about transport? Some proteins perform important role in transport. Good examples is the hemoglobin and myoglobin. Hemoglobin trans help in the transport of oxygen in the blood, whereas myoglobin help with the transport of oxygen in the muscle. Another example of a transport protein is the serum albumin, which transport lipids, triglycerides, and other fatty acids which are insoluble in the aqueous medium of the blood. Movement. What about movement? Now, the common movement, to, common examples is the actin and myosin, which constitute the muscle filament. They perform a role in movement and locomotion. So when you move your, 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 your forearm and hind arm, what helps you to do that movement is the actin and myosin. Energy. You see, proteins are actually broken down to amino acid. And amino acid are further broken down to keto acid. Now, now the, the amino part which goes off in the amination as ammonium is used to form urine and the excreted. Whereas the keto acids are further broken down to generate energy in both the gly glycolytic and the citric acid pathway. So you can say indirectly that are used in generating energy in the body. Well, now we now go to the next thing. What about the classification of protein? We're going to be, like we said in the objectives, we're going to be seeing two different areas of classification here. The first one, classification based on shape and solubility. In this particular context, we have two types of protein. The fibrous protein, the fibrous proteins, and the globular proteins. Now, fibrous proteins are long linear rod shaped, or you can say string-like structures that interwine to form fibers, just like fiber proteins that form long fibers. They, their role is basically in structural functions. They are water insoluble, play important role, play important role in structure, in the structural functions in the body. And good examples we're going to see is that you find these structural proteins in the connective tissues, in the elastic tissues, in the hair, and in the skin. And good example of these proteins are the collagen. Common examples is the collagen, the elastin, and the keratin are all examples of structural proteins. And they are all fibrous proteins themselves. They are insoluble and form long and form a kind of elastic or rod-like shape. We're going to see them in the next pages for the examples. Now, the globular proteins. The globular proteins form global. They are spherical in shape, as you can see. They are spherical in shape. Now, here, it consists of polypeptides that fold on itself so that the hydrophobic chain, hydrophobic side chains 
are buried inside away from the water whereas uh, whereas the hydrophilic ones are in contact with the aqueous water environment and in this shape it makes them to be folded and that's why we use the word they are what spherical we call them spherical proteins now they are usually water soluble and good examples is the hemoglobin we have hemoglobin there myoglobin insulin ferritin and most enzymes enzymes are usually globular protein because they have to be folded and interfolded so that they can fit into the com the compact cells where they perform their important functions now the next picture here is good pictures i have for them now this is the collagen fiber you see this is, looks like a fiber a long fiber that's arranged as how will i put it as a stack of firewood you see this is a collagen fiber that plays that you find in connective tissue and plays an important role in both connecting and moving parts of the body so that is why we say it is they are, they are what they are fibrous protein because they are they look like fibers you see it is stacked up as fibers this is the collagen fiber as an example now again we, so collagen fiber is just remember is a fibrous protein is a fibrous protein fibrous that's not coming out well. fibrous protein good and like i said fibrous proteins are insoluble in water that's why we say we classify them based on either either their shape or their solubility now the insulin and hemoglobin both of these guys are globular proteins they're globular and both of them actually function in hemo, both hemoglobin and this function they, they are found inside the cell so they need to be compact and folded and most of these guys like i said again they are soluble in water now the folding is guided by like we said the the, the inner core is actually where you find the non-polar side chain the non-polar side chain whereas the outside is where you find the polar side chains that is how they are arranged and again insulin performs an important role in metabolism of carbohydrate whereas hemoglobin itself performs an important role in in what transport transport of oxygen transport of oxygen in the blood and you see the the hemoglobin itself has four chains two alpha chains and two beta chains so this is an alpha chain this is a beta Oh, this is a beta chain so this is a beta chain so it has two alpha chain alpha one and two and two beta chain beta one and two that are folded together to bring about that transport form and inside it is fact you find what we call the prosthetic group which helps it which is the hem which helps it to perform its function we're going to see that in the next page now the classification based on composition if we classify proteins based on composition it will result to two classes the simple proteins simple proteins are made up of entirely of amino acid residues no other thing is comes in no metal no other non-protein part or just what you have is just only proteins whereas the conjugated or complex proteins contain amino acid residues and other organic or inorganic component now remember this organic or inorganic component helps the protein itself to maintain the native structure and hence perform its function and those non-protein parts of these conjugated proteins are called prosthetic group the non-protein part of complex proteins are called prosthetic group so that the non-protein part of those conjugated or complex protein and helps protein perform its biological function a good example again this uh, uh, insulin is a simple protein because it only contains amino acid unit it doesn't contain any other so insulin itself is a simple protein this is a simple protein whereas hemoglobin itself is a complex or conjugated protein now so look at the polypeptide the three the, i told you it has four polypeptide chains the two alpha chain and the two beta chain so this is the alpha chain this is the second alpha chain this is the beta chain first one this is the second beta chain and then it has look at this yellow stuff that is connected to this to these chains because it has four chains each of the chain has this heme group and the function of this heme group is to help hemoglobin perform its role 
in the transport of oxygen in the blood. So the role of him group is to transport, is to help it to transport oxygen in blood. So the hem group is the non-protein part of the hemoglobin, or you call it the prosthetic group. And having said that, we've come to the end of this lecture. Thank you once again for listening. Bye at this point.